Hi, I'm Alex and I am an archaeologist. I am actually a doctor of archaeology and I'm here to talk to you today about archaeology and stratigraphy. Stratigraphy is the most basic thing in archaeology. Essentially what it is is layers in the dirt and we use these layers to actually date archaeological objects and the archaeological site as a whole. So in front of me right here we have a beautiful box that does not have dirt in it. Unfortunately, we can't have dirt in the museum or else we'd make a huge mess. But what we do have are various layers. So the difference between these layers are a couple of basic things, right? The color is different among these uh, towels here, but also the texture is probably different as well. And the size or the depth of the layer is also different. And in archaeology, we have different things like rocks, various uh, other types of plants that are inside the layers, as well as uh, moisture levels that make the layers different. But for us right now, we have the different uh, colors, textures, and depths, and we have our first layer right here. So in archaeology, we normally start with the grass. This is our surface layer, and inside the grass we have this. Now what do you think this is? If you guess coin, you are correct. This is a coin. Now, how many of you said very, very old? Well, unfortunately, you're not quite right. It's actually from 2009, and we have a date on it that says 2009, as this is a Turkish modern coin. But we know that for two reasons. One, because it's very close to the surface, and two, because it's in incredible condition. It's near mint, as you might say. So we can tell by the condition and by its position in the layers how old it might be. So we get past this first green grass layer, we get down to our next layer. First thing we notice is that we have a very dark layer of dirt right here. It's very, very, uh, probably full of bugs, animal, debris, things like that. Uh, so it's very rich. And this is where you do a lot of your farming in the world. So inside of this layer, we have this right here. Now, what is this made out of? And how old do you think it is? So this is actually a ceramic. Ceramics uh, come in various shapes and sizes. This is a nice little pot we have right here. So it's fired clay, and you guys have might have interacted with ceramics many times in our class. It's a very nice looking ceramic, and uh, it's in really good condition. Again, we're looking at condition, we're looking at how close it is to the surface. So this is probably not very old at all. Um, it's got a few chips on it, and you know, nothing too major, uh, but maybe a hundred years old or so. Not that old at all. So that makes a lot of sense because we're still very close to the surface of the ground. And we get down to our next layer and what we notice immediately is that the layer of dirt gets a lot lighter. So we're looking at layer of dirt, it's a lot drier, potentially a lot older. So we get to our object within this dirt and it's quite interesting. Now this is a good question for you guys. What do you think it's made out of? What do you think it was used for? And how old do you think that makes it? So, this is a very cool object in my opinion. Uh, it's made out of metal. I don't know how many of you guessed that, but if you did, you're right. Uh, probably something like steel. And it's in these little tiny rings right here. And it's actually a piece of something bigger. It's not the whole object, right? It's a little bit of chain mail. So, chain mail was used by medieval knights as protection. And we know that just based on the style of the object. So we can say then that this is probably maybe five to seven hundred years old or so. It's quite old, but we're getting into uh, antiquity in our layers right now. So we have our medieval chain mail right there, and we get down a little further in our dirt, and we have two objects. Now this is a bit difficult, and I'm going to ask you guys a couple of questions here. But first of all, what are these made out of, and how old do you think they are? Remember the last layer was from the medieval period, so are these younger or older? So, we have these two objects here, and if you guessed 
older, you are absolutely correct because we know that it's in a layer below the medieval stuff, so it must be older than the medieval period. And in fact, what we have here is a Roman piece of glass and a Greek ceramic. So these were both used for similar purposes, probably for scented oils or something like that. But why do we have two objects from different time periods in the same layer together? And here's a question for you guys. See if you can figure out why these two might be in the same layer together. So we have two objects from different time periods. Our Roman piece of glass is approximately 2,000 years old, and our Greek ceramic is 2,400 years old, and they're in the same layer together. So this happens a lot in archaeology, and the way that we date a layer is by the youngest object. So these objects are 400 years apart. And if you think about it, perhaps your mom or dad or even you have some sort of heirloom in your house that's 100, 200, maybe even older, maybe even 400 years old. And if you think about it, you use that heirloom, or you have it, alongside your other modern objects. And if that thing breaks, you're going to throw it up with your trash from today. So, what we have here is perhaps a Greek heirloom thrown out with the Roman trash. And all the dirt is telling us is when things were actually deposited. So we always look towards the youngest object in archaeology to identify how old the layer is. The next layer right here, remember we're getting older as we go down further. The further we go, the older we get. And we have three different objects here. Now, my question for you guys, I have three questions for you. One, what do you think they're made out of? Two, how old do you think they are? And three, what culture do you think they come from? So our three objects are very different objects. We have a first one here, which looks like a wall relief. And um, it's actually made out of stone, probably limestone. It's kind of hard to tell from the front, but you can see from the back that uh, it was probably chipped away from somewhere. But it is what we call a wall relief. Um, so it is in relief on the surface of the stone itself. And if you guessed Egyptian, you were right. This is definitely Egyptian. So it's around 3,000 years old or so, and you can tell based on a lot of different characteristics, the eye, the headdress, jewelry, and there's a little snake coming out right here called the Uraeus, that this is in fact Egyptian. And along with that object, we have two other objects. Uh, one is this small little stone object right here. It's probably some sort of precious stone. It's got all these ridges on the surface. So in the picture, you might have seen something similar to this. It's kind of hard to see from here, but what this is, is when you have a wet piece of clay, you roll this stone on that wet piece of clay, and it actually creates an image with those ridges. So this is actually called a cylinder seal. And these are very common in antiquity for basically signing objects, so claiming objects as your own. You put this on an amphora of wine that you wanted to make sure nobody else drank, or other types of materials to uh, actually sign them as your own, to claim them as your property. And so this is actually from ancient Mesopotamia, which is a little hard to tell from the object, but this one is maybe a little bit easier to tell that it is from ancient Mesopotamia, and it is what we call a cuneiform tablet. If you guessed that, you're awesome, you should become an archaeologist. Uh, this is a very uh, common thing in the ancient uh, Near East, and uh, it again dates to about 3,000 years old, as all the objects in this layer but it's a cuneiform writing system from the Near East, not from Egypt. And uh, this was very important for people in antiquity to actually talk to each other. They'd write notes to each other on clay, they'd incise it on these tablets, and then send them to one another. So we have these three objects, various sizes, various materials. What are they all doing in the same layer? How did they all get in this layer together? Think about it. So, we have those three objects in the same layer together, and the reason that they're probably all collected in the same area, and they're from the same time period, is because of trade. Trade is a very common thing in antiquity. 
And we often forget that ancient Egyptians were trading with ancient Mesopotamians, or ancient Greeks were trading with ancient Romans. A lot of trade occurred, and a lot of goods went back and forth across the ancient world. People didn't just live in bubbles, they actually communicated with one, one another. So those probably ended up in the same place because of trade. But we have one last layer here, and as you can see, it's pretty thick. So possibly a lot of time has gone by. It's not entirely clear until we get to the objects themselves. And what do we have here? What kind of objects are these, and how old do you think they are? So, we have some pretty old objects, as you might have guessed here. And they're actually stone tools. So, they're made out of stone, and they're some of the first tools that humans actually made. So, these can range in date from, you know, Neolithic period all the way back to the Paleolithic period, and these in particular are around five or six thousand years old. So like I said, a lot of time has gone by in between uh, our last three object assemblage and these two stone tools right here. But these are six thousand years old, and now we get to the bottom of the box. So in real archaeology, we don't have a nice plastic end right here. Um, we often hit bedrock, or we hit something called the sterile layer, where there's no more human remains to be found. So what we do then is we stop excavation. So what do you think we do with the objects that we've excavated? What do we do now? So we have all these objects, and what we do as archaeologists is we document them make sure that we know everything about them that we possibly can at the initial stage by washing, by measuring, and by uh, writing down what they are in our own records. From that point, we actually give them to a museum or some sort of governing body that can take care of them. And these museums will store them for us or they will uh, restore them and set them up for presentation. And that's what we have at the Memorial Art Gallery, are displays of many of these objects some were excavated, some were collected, uh, that show us what people have discovered over time. So congratulations on completing your first archaeological excavation. Um, hopefully you'll get the chance at some point in your life to participate in real excavation, but this is something like what you would experience there. And you'll also have the opportunity, hopefully many times in your life, to go to a museum and see some of these objects on display. But always remember that archaeology and the past is all around you, just waiting to be studied.